Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope and the new book, Learn to Stargaze for Kids. Just a quick unsponsored video this week because I'm going on a trip and I'm gonna switch up which telescope I'm bringing with me. I'm thinking about taking this one, the Sharp Star 61, and leaving all my astrophotography gear behind. Now in the past, I loved traveling with my C90 telescope. I had it on the AZ GTI mount without the wedge, and the nice thing about the C90 at the time was that this was a budget telescope, had only $125 pre-pandemic pricing. Now I used this to view the occultation of Mars from the Caribbean just after dawn, and star clusters from Hawaii, and it worked out great. I've also traveled with a full astrophotography rig, including the Sharp Star 61. But as I said, this time I'm planning to leave all the astrophotography gear behind and just enjoy the night sky as a stargazer. On my last trip to Arizona, I took the Skywatcher Evolux 82, and it worked out great, but unfortunately, that telescope wasn't mine, and I had to send it back. Now on this trip, I was originally planning to take this Celestron DX5, which is an SCT, and honestly, I'm a bit torn. This telescope is a real powerhouse. Five inches of aperture, a long focal length, and it still fits in my carry-on. The challenge is that I'm doing outreach events, and this long focal length means high magnification with my eyepieces, and with a lot of people looking through the telescope, that's not gonna be very forgiving. The slightest bump, and I'm gonna have to jump in and line it up again. Because I'm not planning on bringing a tracking mount this time, I'd like something that provides minimum magnification with the eyepieces that I plan to use, which leads me back to the Sharp Star 61. Now in my beginner videos, I tend to stress that my minimum requirement for a beginner telescope is that it has at least four inches of aperture. This telescope has just 61 millimeters, which is 2.4 inches. That means this telescope collects three times less light and the resolution is much less as well. But here's the thing, this telescope is not a beginner telescope. The four inch requirement is a filter used to eliminate the hobby killers and the bird feeder telescopes from a beginner selection criteria. When it comes to high-end telescopes, what they lack in light gathering, they make up for in quality. Triplet optics and ED glass limit chromatic aberration and help increase the contrast in the image. This telescope has a very low focal length at only 335 millimeters. This is gonna offer very wide field views. It also accepts two inch eyepieces for wide and immersive views of the sky. Seasoned astronomers may ask why I'm not bringing binoculars. Well, there's two reasons. First, this is for outreach. And if I have a line of 100 people waiting to see an open star cluster in the constellation Perseus, it's a lot easier to show them in a telescope. And second, it's just easier on the arms. Okay, so if you have this telescope and you're planning on using it visually, the first step is gonna to be to remove the field flattener that you probably put on here when you first bought the telescope. To my knowledge, there's no way to insert the eyepiece with this in place. Now I'm gonna replace that with a two inch diagonal. First, screw on the adapter that came with the telescope and insert the diagonal. Now I'm also planning to bring this small atazimuth mount, which does present some challenges. So if I put the telescope on here, as you can see, it places the finder at a very awkward angle. So we're gonna have to make some changes. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove this little carrying handle here. We're gonna flip over this cradle, and then we'll need to reposition the dovetail. All right, so that's all we're gonna do. Now we just put it back on the mount. And now the finder is in a much more reasonable position. And so for eyepieces, I'm gonna bring the following. A 20 millimeter ultra wide field eyepiece with a two inch barrel, and this is what I'll use for deep sky objects. A zoom eyepiece for the moon and double stars and stuff like that. And I'll bring a five millimeter eyepiece for looking at planets. I'll also bring a moon filter, and an ultra high contrast filter or UHC filter for looking at nebula. <laughs> She's holding up the ledge. You can't come. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to go and we've got everything we need. Let's pack it up and head to the airport.
We left from Halifax, Nova Scotia with stops in Vancouver, British Columbia and San Francisco, California. The first stargazing destination during the trip was in Arizona. I was asked to bring my telescope to Biosphere 2, which is located about halfway between Phoenix and Tucson. This was for the Analog Astronaut Conference, which happens annually during the beginning of May. Talks ranged from XR to robotics to marine biology. There was also live music during the evenings, which you'll hear in the background during our stargazing sessions. Despite the remoteness of Biosphere 2, our stargazing targets were limited by the full moon. Most people wanted to take photos of the moon with their cell phones anyway, so that's what we did most of the time. Off, but you move further down. What brings you to uh, Everglades? Yeah. High school moon. It's cool if you sit here and you can watch the moon moving. Yeah, because it's like trying to keep itself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Don. We're being Starlinked. Woo! Woo! Starlinked. The aliens. <laughs> Just for us. <laughs> During the second night of the conference, we took a break from stargazing to explore the moon and Mars habitat. We also got to see professional divers test out an underwater tent. <laughs> Holy It's <laughs> <laughs> a kid friendly oh, YouTube yeah. channel. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Uh, uh, T Willikers. <laughs> I, yes, I did an analog astronaut mission. I did Sirius 21. It was eight months in isolation and confinement. And uh, we just got out in July 2022. And uh, yeah. Um, and now here in beautiful Arizona. Getting to see the moon in yeah, high quality. Yeah, you really framed that well. Nice. Really exciting. There you go. About a week later, I was back in California, where Mrs. Stargaze and I got to help out with an event with the Mount Diablo Astronomical Society. Oh, it's so beautiful. Hi, Venus. We began by viewing Venus and Mars shortly after sunset. Venus was clearly visible in its gibbous phase, and Mars was so small in this telescope, it was basically just a point of light. The best thing about this telescope was definitely the big eyepiece, which really did provide immersive views of the stars, no matter what part of the sky we were looking at. This is a satellite. Yeah? Yeah, right across the edge of the eyepiece. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Sharp Star 61 telescope. Be sure to check out 110 Things to See with a Telescope, available wherever books are sold. This book will take your stargazing to the next level. Subscribe to learn to stargaze so you don't miss the next video, and remember, the future is looking up.